Hey everyone, um, this is going to be a tutorial and discussion in how to achieve what is called value uh, by using line. Um, the technique actually would be called cross-hatching, um, I suppose, and there are a few different approaches to it. I'm just teaching the approach that I, I've always come to be accustomed to. Um, I've gone ahead and done the outline of my still life um, or my object to begin with. That way I don't waste time having to do the contour, uh, the proportions, and the shape and the form. Although value has a little bit to do with that. Um, but just to cut down on time, I've already gone ahead and done the outline. There's another video that's about uh, two techniques that have to do with getting the outline. So you can watch that video and then you can watch this one um, second. So um, something I didn't talk about though previously um, is that when you're drawing um, objects uh, as close to, as, as representationally, uh, as possible, you want to pick things that I think have an interesting form or shape. So a lot of people will actually, you know, try and draw a pen or a pencil, something that they already have that's readily available. Not to say you can't draw something like this, but because of the dimensions of this uh, and how narrow it is and how, you know, let's say elongated the shape is, this might be too much. Uh, for someone that's a beginner or just starting to to draw or render more seriously. I like things that are more robust. So I have I have this picture from my kitchen. Um, it's got, well, I'll just use the drawing, but I mean the handle of it, the, um, the spout, all of these things have visual interest. Um, it's ace. Uh, it has asymmetry as opposed to being completely symmetrical. It's not uniform. Um, if you turn it on its angle, it's even more interesting. So try and pick things, objects, utilitarian devices that have a unique twist on them. Um, I mean, industrial design is a whole art form in and of itself. Um, and there's plenty of, you know, like uh, tea kettles, um, speakers. Uh, what else? Um, you know, kitchen appliances. Um, if you're thinking about organic stuff, um, fruit, vegetables, classic still life foods, uh, like bell peppers, um, bananas, things like that. Things that have asymmetry to them, that they're not like completely balanced. They don't have, you know, like a pen is pretty balanced. If I cut this in half, it's going to be equal on both sides. Maybe if I lay it like that on its side, yeah, it's more interesting. But like I said, the shape of this might be uh, a little much for a beginner, especially if you're trying to draw it on something as large as a piece of paper. You know, you'd have to zoom in on it like this. And that's a different video and that's a different tutorial about changing the scale of something in your page. So, Value. Value refers to uh, shadows, mostly, when people say value in the realm of painting or uh, drawing. Um, it can certainly refer to light as well. Uh, you know, essentially the different degrees of shadows going from dark to light. Um, typically, pe people, I think, are more accustomed and familiar with using a pencil and then drawing like this and then using their thumb or a shading stick to blend things. I started doing that a lot, but it became a crutch and I had a teacher that actually said to me, you know, you never need to do a finished drawing by uh, blending or smudging or burnishing things together. You can just do it with line. And it didn't sink in for me until many, many years later. And now it's now it's my preferred way to draw. I like the texture of using line and the the hard edges, um, the quality of the line work. Uh, it just gives a different effect, a different aesthetic for when you're shading. Um, so 
This video is going to be a little bit longer too. I'm already at the five minute mark, so I'll try to keep it under 10. I don't think I'll finish um, this drawing in this video. I'll, I'll probably just stop it at 10 and then finish it um, afterwards and then post a picture along with this video. But I can definitely show you how I would get started. So the first thing is um, this cast shadow, this is supposed to be, this was, this is on the table. This is on the, or if it was on the, the ground, it'd be on the floor. So since it's flat, all of my lines are going to be at a diagonal and parallel to each other because I'm mimicking the uh, direction of the table and I'm thinking about the perspective created by my uh, point of view. Now already you might be able to see this, but the farther apart the lines are, the lighter something will look. The illusion of going from dark to light will appear. And if you want, you know, if you want that gradual effect like a gradient to happen, then you're going to have to play with the distance of the line. And you have to be consistent in some places. Like I said, this is the cast shadow, so this should be flat. And it's a little bit lighter over here, so I'm spreading my lines out farther apart from one another. Some people like to use a straight, uh, straight edge, excuse me for this, and that's perfectly fine. I think it's a little cumbersome though because you gotta hold this other tool. It'll look cleaner for sure, but I mean, a study like this, a quick sketch, I don't think it's it's super necessary. Also, if you're freehanding straight lines, it gives your motor skills more practice to draw straight lines without having to use a straight edge. Um, so that's flat, so hence my lines going that way. Now this is standing up, the, the, the picture itself. So there's a, a dark value right here on the rim, on the bottom rim of the device. So I'm switching the direction of my line. And it's pretty dark, so I'm going to make these very close together. Now when you're working with stuff that's clear plastic as well, um, it's important to note that light is going to behave in a very complex way, which is actually why a lot of artists, designers like to use um, clear uh, objects like glass, uh, clear plastic, things that have translucence to them because it gives a nice quality. Light plays off of it in very complex ways. Um, and depending on what you're using, whether it's paint or a pen or pencil, you get such a variety of colors and values that it'll make for a more interesting um, still life. So the body um, of the, um, the picture is, is round like, like so. So the other thing that you can do with line for value is you can also emphasize the three-dimensionality, the form and the shape of something. And you want to be clean about this part too. Just like these lines are very consistent, these lines need to be consistent as well. And there's some reflections going on here from the handle. There are just some flat lines in here. I haven't done any cross hatching just yet. I'm about 25 more seconds in, but um, I'm just going to keep parallel lines for now. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, that is more or less playing with line to create value. Um, in the finished version of this, you'll, you, I'll show some uh, lines that are actually interacting with one another, actually crossing like my wrist right there. Um, but think about form, think about the shape of the object that you're drawing, and squint your eyes if you're having trouble seeing the shadows and the light and experiment with mark making to achieve the different three dimensional uh the different parts that you see that are that are have a certain three-dimensional shape to them okay give it a shot see what happens